Okay, so this video is a uh, transmission tuning. I've been doing a lot of transmission tuning the last uh, couple days. So, uh, trying to get this thing dialed in exactly the way I wanted it with the uh, actual transmission control module that allows me to reprogram it. So, the, the one that allows me to have my lockup, you know, uh, when I want and my shift points. So, what I had a problem with is that in fourth gear, when uh, I would have the the uh, bus floored the transmission converter would unlock the torque converter which that shouldn't happen so um, so what we have to do here is we have to retune the torque converter for when I have it um, floored and uh, we want to see what it does and what in fourth gear we want to make sure it doesn't what I my thought was when I programmed it is that below certain speeds that I would be lugging the engine to have the torque converter clutch applied so that if I had it applied, say, below like 40, uh, below like 50 miles an hour or whatever, then the issue would be that, that uh, I would be out of the power band. Well, it can't be farther from the truth because I would feel that torque converter clutch disengage and I felt like I had less power until it re-engaged again a few miles an hour later. So um, we're just going to tell it that we want that torque converter clutch under wide open throttle this has to do with when it's floored to uh actually run pretty much all the time so what you got here is uh you've got fourth gear here we got our our tuning software open our efi live open and you uh, go here and you can read it and it says vehicle speed at which a torque converter clutch will be applied in wide open throttle using the normal shift pattern that's when it's in d the low value and the high value and uh Basically, that just means, you know, where you're working. So we want to set this guy, uh, the low value on it, down to, um, uh, we want to set the low value down so that it actually is always applied more. So we're going to go 40, and we're going to make the high value be uh, 42. So that way this torque converter clutch is on more. Now I need to make sure that I can't release it. I don't want to be able to release it if it's already applied. So I go over here, wide open throttle torque converter release speed, 41 and 40. See, it would release if I was down there in those speeds. So uh, right about the time it shifted gears. So uh, we want to make sure that this thing, vehicle speed at which the torque converter clutch will be released in wide open throttle using the normal shift pattern. So uh, typically the hierarchy is, is that this wide open throttle stuff can sometimes um, override this. So release, yeah, if it gets down to as slow as 36 miles an hour and uh, 32, then I'll let that thing release because I probably need it at that point in time. The regular torque converter clutch apply speeds, here we go, this is a pattern, shift pattern A is regular D. And you can see in fourth gear, we turn the clutch convert. These are the things along the sides there is your throttle position. So you can see that I engage the torque converter uh, at 100% throttle at 43. Of course, we should be in our normal throttle mode, but this is probably set way too high. So what we're going to do is we're going to lower these numbers and we're going to drop them down to 35. And that way that torque converter clutch is going to be on because... Typically, at wide open throttle, you're not going to be in fourth gear at that point in time anyway. Your third gear is going to override it at the shift point, which we're not even looking. So now we'll look at the release speeds. And uh, typically, you want this thing to be released. You can see we have this graph here that shows us. So when we get off of the pedal, we always want that converter clutch applied, which for that's downhill. So when we go down hills, you want to you take your foot off the gas. You want that converter clutch in. Even if it wasn't previously, you want it on. So here, we typically want our release speeds to be a couple mile an hour early or lower. So we will set them all at 33, just like the other one there, 33. And now you'll save the file. And now we will burn it to the, uh, we're gonna burn it to the transmission controller. So we go here and there's our Allison six speed TCM and we're going to start. And it's gonna tell us that you can do damage to your vehicle if you do this wrong. So now it's reprogramming the computer right now. So kind of cool. 
and uh, we'll let it do its thing. It takes it about a minute to do this. It's only 128k of memory, but and I have no idea what the flash memory, the number of writes you can do to one of these or not. I've probably done 30 or 40, but I would imagine you can do a lot more. We'll find out if I ever ruin this thing by continuously writing to it. But so far, so good. I haven't had any issues with it. Um, taking the actual programs. So now it'll get done here. TCM program successfully. And then it's going to tell us here that it's got to reboot it, which it just did. And now it tells me to turn off the key. So we turn off the key. And then you uh, resets the power on the TCM. You gotta wait for this thing to go down 30 seconds. And then after that, we can uh, we can um, take it and drive it and uh, see what happens to it. But so that's just a little idea there. Of course, you got all these different things you can do with your transmission. I'm sure this thing won't let me click on anything because that window is open. But you can see there's our torque converter clutch. We can change our pressures. I haven't gotten into pressures yet. That's how you uh, pressures are um, how you uh, handle various uh, shift quality issues with it. So uh, we got that. We're done here. We close our little program out. And we'll unplug our USB and we're going to plug our USB into our uh, transmission monitor on the dashboard so that we can actually, uh, I get to get the, the laptop put away here. Don't need the, it's a Windows program, but I use a MacBook with a virtual machine and it works perfectly for this. Um, even though the EFI Life people will tell you, you really need to have a regular Windows machine. It seems to work perfectly. I haven't had any issues programming it with... Uh, a uh, virtual machine. I use a uh, VMware Fusion in uh, win in uh, Mac. And we gotta get this USB cable in. That's a little bit tricky because the tablet's on the dashboard. So we got that. You heard it connect. So now it is connected, and I can tell the uh, software to connect to the truck. Let me start the bus. Yeah, I know it's a diesel. I didn't wait for it, but that's fine. So we're going to tell it we're connecting to the transmission. Now it'll load all of its files and be connected. This is down here. It's connecting, validates the parameters. In the meantime, we will uh, close the door and get ready to go for a bus ride because we're going to test this thing out. got a pizza on the way but uh, I got enough time that we can test this thing out here it takes it a minute after you've tuned one of these things for it to uh, find everything so once it does we tell our monitor system to engage and all our gauges read and you can see what we've got is we got our torque converter clutch we'll be watching that that's our slip torque converter slip there's our throttle, and since I put on the throttle, it goes up and down, our temperature gauge. This is our voltage to the TCM, that's important for reference, to the uh, vehicle speed sensor. Now these three gauges over here, that's your output speed sensor, that's your upshift, your current OSS speed, and your downshift. Those are important when you're adjusting your shift points, because uh, those little guys there are what tell you the next time it's going to shift at whatever throttle you're at so you can you can watch and see so uh, let's go for a ride here we'll watch this transmission as soon as we start to move it says we're in drive and we're set to gear one and it's calling for gear one which is good and you can see our shift point as it gets to the ups closer to the upshift as we speed up then it will uh, it'll actually shift gears at that point in time we got some sun glare going on. It's actually a rare sunny day and the is so high out today. So we're in second gear, it will downshift probably. I did a little tablet work too. Moved them down to the dash instead of up high like they were. I got good visibility through the steering wheel on most of them. The transmission one is good if you take it from my vantage point here. Uh, you, know, you can see I can see all my gauges now. It was up here. I didn't like that. It felt distracting having it up high like that. So uh, I moved it. And uh, I used uh, 
little binder clips to hold it in at the bottom and they got Velcro on the back and it seems that they haven't bounced off yet and fallen on the floor. Okay, we're second gear. And you can see our little downshift and upshift. As I get on the throttle, that downshift number, uh, um, that downshift number will get closer. that it wants to uh, want, or it wants to downshift sooner so uh, here we go we're gonna punch it going around this corner so we uh, get out here in the traffic which there isn't much so we're in first gear and we'll level it second gear there's third now we're locked up in third gear video of a little transmission tuning there for you um, on Redbird. And, uh, you know, my little uh, tablets are remounted. got my soda pop over here. It's a little warm in here. I got to turn the air conditioner on today. So uh, I'm going to finish this bus ride and go have some pizza. So uh, happy Labor Day, everyone.